And um, here, uh, so we can start the session. So I would just take privilege to invite our first speaker, uh, which is online with us, um, Dr. Neelam Salim Panjani, Assistant uh, Teaching Lecturer, University of Alberta. Actually, she's Assistant Professor, University of Alberta, Canada. Dr. Neelam, she will join us virtually. My name is Dr. Nizam Panjani, and I'm the assistant professor at the University of Alberta. Today, I'm presenting about the advances in oncology, role of oncology nurses in improving patient sexual and reproductive health. So we'll be talking about some background about the sexual health concerns among cancer patients, impact of cancer on sexuality, nurses' beliefs, the importance of nursing assessment, and the communication skills. And at the end, I'm going to share some of the recommendations. Sexual health concerns are complex and all physiologic, physical, psychological, and cultural aspect must be considered to improve the quality of life of patients with cancer. Nurses experience challenges in discussing sexual health with patients. Such challenges can include limited knowledge, poor communication skills, and scare of training available to improve confidence among nurses. In addition, embarrassment and lack of time or stigma and shyness may come into play when talking about sexual health with the cancer patients. The age of patient and the nurse has also been reported as a barrier to communicate about sexual health with the cancer patients. Let's talk about the impact of cancer on sexuality. Physical or psychosocial changes associated with living with cancer can affect one's sexual reproductive health function, functioning, body image, and perceptions about intimacy. The results can be altered sexual self-concept. Men and women can be equally affected. A combination of altered body image post-surgery and reduced sexual drive can threaten one's own masculinity or femininity. Gender-specific cancers, example, testicular cancer, prostate cancer, or ovarian cancers, can directly impact on sexuality or fertility of patients. In continuation, treatment side effects can have variable impact, ranging from radiotherapy-related nerve damage or subsequent sexual dysfunction or chemotherapy-related infertility. Such effects can be disturbing as cancer itself. Research suggests that regardless of age or gender, patients with cancer have sexual health needs that vary across cancer trajectory. For instance, during diagnosis and active treatment, sexual concerns may be experienced but rated lower on patients' priority list. But as patients start to adjust to life with and beyond cancer, sexual health deficits may become more prominent and become problematic among patients. Do you know that 40 out of 1,000 cancer patients experience some form of sexual issues? Sexual issues affect up to 90% of women treated with breast cancer. And cancer patients face major quality of life issues due to sexual dysfunction. There are so many myths and misconceptions that prevent nurses from asking about sexual health or talking or communicating with patients about sexual health issues. Some of these nurses' beliefs are, someone else will do it. Patient never ask about it, so they must not care. I don't know how to help them or I don't have time. They should be happy to be alive. They are too old, sick, or young to ask these questions or start communication. I don't have specialized education on sexual health or I am not married. Some of the high-risk characteristics that includes more sexual dysfunction or having to have more sexual issues among cancer patients includes age more than 30 years, surgery, radiation, medications, or psychosocial issues. Let's talk about some of the sexual issues among men that can be caused by the cancer treatment. It could be erectile, erectile dysfunction, decreased libido, 
ejectulary dysfunction, gynecomastia, penile testicular atrophy, urinary issues, impotence, bowel dysfunction, and pain. Similarly, women also face some of the sexual issues due to the cancer treatment that can include irregular menstrual cycle, early menopause, vaginal dryness, painful intercourse, decreased libido, vaginal stenosis, fibrosis, or vaginal ulceration. Let's talk about what's the importance of nursing assessment and management. So general things to consider during the assessment can include, not every nurses can be sexual counselor because we do not get formal training about sexual health. I know there is some part of where we study about sexual health, but it's not the formal course that we usually learn during our nursing school. But the solution is to listen, listen and listen actively to the patient and their partner's need. Sexuality is more than the act of intercourse. It includes intimacy, touching, and a multitude of activities to show affection to the partner. Cancer may affect permanently the sexual patterns and fertility, but it cannot alter the fact that one is a sexual being. There are some of the barriers to the assessment approaches that I'm talking uh, that I'll be talking about right now. Uh, this could be personal discomfort among the healthcare professionals, fear of embarrassing the patient or the healthcare provider, lack of training or knowledge, lack of time, concerns about the appropriateness of this type of discussion when dealing with the life-threatening condition, and belief that it's not important or it's not part of the nurse's job description. There are some more beliefs that includes cultural, religious belief, and general intimacy should be incorporated in the discussion. Whenever possible and appropriate, the patient's partner should be included in such kind of a discussion. Medical jargon should be avoided with patients. Information about the disease must be provided so that, so that it decreases the anxiety among patients. And questions and responses should acknowledge the subject and related concerns. Sexual counseling among cancer patients is a very important part. All patients should receive information about the possible side effects of diseases and treatment on sexuality and reproduction. That should include alteration in the physical function and libido, menopausal symptoms, problems with erection and ejaculation, and problems about the infertility. There are different kind of a methods. Uh, I'll be talking about two. So these are the sexual counseling evaluation methods. Uh, we can use alarm model or we can use different models. There are so many models that are available. So in the alarm model, we just look for the activity, sexual activity. We ask about the libido and desire, arousal and orgasm, resolution, release, and medical data. There is another model called as Auchincloss model. In this model, we evaluate sexual status of the patient, uh, present sexual function, past experiences, relationship, evaluate medical, psychological, and cancer status among these patients. So after the holistic assessment that we do with the patients, interventions are very important. Uh, with cancer patients, this uh, include to maintain optimal sexual function and to promote adaption for the side effects of sexual dysfunction, uh, we aim to improve the quality of life of this patient. We also remember the individualism because all the patients are different, their needs are different. And there is another model that is called as the Plicit model of intervention, and I'll be discussing that model in a minute. So the Plicit model offers nurses or case managers a concise framework for intervention to address patients' concerns at the earliest stages of the distress and help assure inform feedback to the healthcare team regarding the patient's sexual issues. So this is the uh, placid model for intervention where P is for permission, uh, limited information, specific suggestion, and intensive therapy. So let's discuss about the nursing management that we can use while providing uh, care to our cancer patients. Uh, managing for traditional symptoms are very, very important. So for example, nausea, vomiting, uh, bone marrow depression, uh, thrombocytopenia, neutropenia, et cetera. Uh, we also need to focus on the symptoms that affect sexual function. So peripheral neuro uh, neuropathy, malnutrition, um, fatigue, hand, foot, mouth, uh, hand foot syndrome, or incontinence. 
manage the side effects of treatment. Uh, as for women, for example, difficulty reaching climax, uh, loss of desire for sex, reduced size of the vagina or the vaginal dryness. And manage the side effects of the treatment as for men include erection and ejaculation problems, loss of desire for sex, etc. And also it's very important that we don't forget to tell our patients the important role. Talk with the healthcare team if they have any problem. Talk with the partner uh, because communication is the key. And explore other ways of being intimate and talk with the other cancer survivors to understand their experiences. Sexual health care should be an integral part of the holistic person-centered care for patients with cancer. Nurses can have a very important role, but nurse-led sexual health care in this context has been historically very, very challenging. Nurses-led provision of sexual health care in cancer care remains suboptimal and challenging due to mainly that nurses' assumptions and prejudice towards the sexual health care lack of professional confidence in dealing with sensitive issues and an impending healthcare system environment. Constant collaboration between nurses in various roles and other healthcare professionals ensures that issues are identified early, concerns are addressed and questions are answered, thus supporting and enabling healthcare throughout the illness experience among these cancer patients. Thank you so much for your time and attention. Thank you, Dr. Neelam, for discussing very important and sensitive topic, which is role of oncology nurses in improving patient sexual and reproductive health. Um, myths are related to sexual health in our society and our culture, um, and people are reluctant to share their experiences and their uh, uh, problems with the healthcare professional. So this is very important topic. Thank you very much. The next topic is innovation and inspiration celebrating the impact of oncology nursing globally in Pakistan. And this topic will be presented by Rehana Panjwani, Additional Director, Nursing Dow University Hospital, Karachi, Pakistan. Thank you so much. Thank you. So I'll be talking about innovation and inspiration. Uh, yesterday also I had a talk. So we were just discussing the impact of oncology nurses and what is the scope and where are we right now and where we can go. So today is, I'm going to give a little bit of glimpse that of what kind of innovations nurses can do and what impact they can put in patient care. So we discussed that also that inter according to International uh, Agency for Research of Cancer and one in five people will develop cancer during their lifetime and one in uh, eight men and one and 11 women will die because of this disease. 50 million people are living within five years of a past cancer diagnosis. And the global burden of cancer is increasing. And there was an app, I mean, you know, there's approximately 40% of the patient will get cancers. Pakistan statistics for cancer, if you go to the burden of cancers, you'll look at it that, you know, we have a high burden of breast cancer. And there are other cancers and we see a lot of cancer for, uh, you know, because of the eating of good cars and, you know, the chewing tobaccos, we see a lot of oral cancers. Then there's lung cancer, osteo cancer and esophageal cancer and colon uh, rectum cancers. If we see by gender, uh, oral cancer is like, you know, topmost 12.9%, lung cancer is the second one in line in male and female, uh, the breast cancer is one of the highest uh, prevalence of cancers. And we know that breast cancer ka bhi ek October mein humne pura month celebrate kiya. One in eight women will develop breast cancers. So that is really high. And we have high mortality in breast cancer because there is late diagnosis. So we know the challenges. Hamare paas sabse bada agar universal health coverage or accessibility is the challenge. We have fewer organizations, fewer hospitals to cover all the population. Then we don't have universal health coverage. And then regime for management is not particular. And then the another challenge is human resource. Ad inadequate training in oncology. We have very few centers who particularly are dedicated towards oncology training with so much burden in oncology in Pakistan and with higher population, 240 million population, 
हमारे पास ट्रेनिंग सेंटर्स बहुत कम है तो जो नर्सेस ऑनकोलॉजी में काम भी कर रही हैं उनके पास उस पर्टिकुलर स्पेशलिटी की ट्रेनिंग नहीं है द स्पेशलिटी इज नॉट रिकग्नाइज इन पाकिस्तान इफ यू गो इन हायर एंड कम कंट्रीज वी नो दैट ऑनकोलॉजी नर्सिंग इज स्पेशलिटी एंड इज कंसिडर्ड एवरीबडी हैज टू गो थ्रू स्टडी प्रोग्राम एजुकेशन एंड देन लाइसेंश्योर एंड देन दे गेट टू वर्क इन ऑनकोलॉजी just in uh, you know in the previous presentation neelam also mentioned that you know there is a specific need of oncology patients because of the all the side effects all the psychological physiological issues and we are not trained to address those issues sexual is one so we don't have that uh, and we are here sitting here which is a very good sign that we are here to identify those issues and work on that and trust me we are the one who are supposed to do it so another problem is we don't have cultural uh, research culture jo ke we have to and between amongst nurses it's very rare to find nurse researchers in pakistan which is highly needed so i looked at lit different literature and you know the challenges are overall similar it's high income countries and low income countries it's almost the same they also you know say the same thing that there is not an adequate training usa uk the few of the countries have very specific trainings licensures examinations and you see pediatric hematology oncology ke societies and they have licensures and we were in discussion and we thought um we kind of contemplated on it and we kind of discussed that we need these examinations but somebody has to start it up their workforce uh, recruitment is another challenge when we discuss that also that we have very little uh, retention retention is less than 2 years when we have less retention we don't have trainings and this kind of multiplies and you know kind of accelerates it uh, resource constraints are there agar hum training karwana bhi chahte hain to bahut sare kam resources hain nurses don't get that opportunity uh, little or no career uh, advancement if there some there's somebody who is particularly want to work in cancer she gets her licensures wo apna padhai bhi kar leti hai wo training bhi le leti hai then uski advancement nahi hai and i spoke to many nurses a lot many nurses say ke if we work in oncology then hamara specific field jo hai na wo bahut shrink ho jata hai then we have very less scope in pakistan where do we work we, we only have few organizations jahan par hame recruit karenge to hamara scope limited ho jata hai agar hum we if we do work in specialty cardiology we have a higher scope because there are more centers and then there is a culture that you know you when you study more you want advancement in your culture you want to be you know in management position or leadership position. position because there is a culture which says that you know agar aapne bachelor's kar liya masters kar liya then you don't work in that side but unfortunately this culture has to change even phd nurses work on that side because they contribute a lot to patient care and we are here for patient care to jab tak hum kaam nahi karenge jo humne padha hai it will not be translated in practice and to have that you know um, the difference basically is the evidence based practice in our knowledge and the you know the translation in the practice and there is a huge gap between uh, the knowledge and practice is because we do not really the people who are really educated don't really work in practice situations so that gap, gap has to be decreased aur wo hum sabko karna hai now i come to the main topic jo ke innovation and inspiration hai what i really want you to understand that nurses are the leaders in innovation also what kind of innovations i talk to a lot of people and people say that you know what we can do what difference when we can make hum kya kar sakte hain let me tell you how many of you have used snapit ampule cutter use kiya snapit you know that was invented by a nurse because she was cutting an ampule and she thought that this is not this is not the method to use it she invented snapit that was innovation and we all use it right how many people have used um, disposable tourniquets have you used yes that was a nurse and it was a great innovation every i mean you know it is recommended for infection control and prevention ke wo jo purane wale tourniquets ho rahe the wo nahi use kare and use the disposable ones use it per patient so you know you don't transmit infections and there are dressings i mean you know i was just reading about it i was preparing presentation and there is one nurse who is creating a um um 
a dressing which is for the amputated leg or for the dressing or for the bandage of the places where this the, where the conventional dressing is not suitable like even hat and she is like innovating that so this is um, you know something which we have to think out of the box and understand that we can also invent things so there are two examples johnson and johnson gives a quick fire challenge and they give 100000 rupees for the nurses who have a very creative idea to build that and to help them build that particular idea that you know they win and the last uh, invention which got uh, the prize was a nationwide children cancer hospital in columbus ohio and she developed a mobile application for capturing the entire symptom experience of children with cancer in an interactive and fun interface and this is so innovative i mean you know i told you about yesterday that you know when i went to turkey they had a consensus meeting on symptom assessment like hum to bhi bahut dur hain sexual assessment ki baat ki lekin ab to hum symptom assessment pe aate bhi nahi hain but imagine they held the consensus meeting on symptom assessment kaun sa tool use hona chahiye symptoms ke liye kaun si strategy use honi chahiye kaun si cheez hame karni chahiye what works what works in which country what is the best and they did develop a booklet out of it a consensus country wise consensus that this is how we are going to work on symptoms associated with cancers and this one created this nurse created an app and this is not just one app i saw i saw a uh, multiple apps like pain assessment has an app somebody created it was a not a nurse but a physician oriented an app palliative and pain management team developed a pain assessment app and it's a beautiful app you, you can read about it you can go google it और अब वो ऐप देखें वो बच्चों को ऐप दी जाती है दे डू देयर पेन असेसमेंट वो अपना सब बताते हैं कि उनको कितने बजे पेन हुआ था व्हाट मेडिकेशन दे टुक द फेसेस एंड ऑल द सिम्टम्स एंड दिस इज इनोवेशन राइट एंड टेक्नोलॉजी इज हियर वी हैव वी आर लिविंग इन अ सोसाइटी वेयर यू नो वील सी जेन जी तो ये तो ऐप्स पे ही सारी चीजें चलेगी then there are so many mobile apps so you know this is and then there is another innovation and principal investigator for the electronic patient visit assessment this is another system we we talked about you know apps using electronics and by you know the apps uh, yesterday neelam told talked about that so you know there's few ideas that that work and we should think of that also and why can't we we also do something like that so there are another things you know you go to these sites and you know go be aware of it there are things you can even siop international society of pediatric oncology where i'm very active they really appreciate innovative ideas i know one of my colleague developed you know we were like struggling ke hum uh, one arm distance pe purel kaise lagaye right in pakistan it was very difficult to hang but we worked in oncology and we knew how important it was or hum we were really struggling ke kaise kare and what she did was it was very innovative we loved it we shared it we presented it even and she what zip tie aati hai na jaise hum imtiyaz mein jate hain to wo thali pe laga ke dete hain right very cheap very easy we took zip ties aur humne purel ke jo uh, dispensers hain usko iv pole se zip tie se har iv pole ke sath laga diya वाला इजी हर आम डिस्टेंस पे जहां पेशेंट गया उसके साथ आईवी पोल पे प्यूरल था एंड द प्रॉब्लम इट वाज सो इजी एंड देन देर वाज अनदर इनोवेशन व्हिच आई एम गोइंग टू शेयर व्हिच व्हिच वाज शेयर्ड इन पोस्टर प्रेजेंटेशन इन इंटरनेशनल कॉन्फ्रेंसेस आल्सो सो वी वर डेवलपिंग अ पोटा कैथेटर सेंट्रल लाइन इंसर्शन एंड यू नो द ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम एंड वी डिड नॉट हैव मैनिकन लेट्स बी ऑनेस्ट वी डोंट हैव फंड्स इतनी महंगी है उसकी जो सिमुलेशन मैनिकन होती है वो इतनी महंगी होती है हाउ मच वी कैन अफोर्ड एंड देन वी लिव इन स्मॉल स्मॉल प्लेसेस छोटी छोटी जगह काम कर रहे होते हैं हमें ट्रेनिंग भी करानी होती है सो वी वर लाइक यू नो द टीचर्स द एजुकेटर्स केम टू मी एंड दे सेट यू आर वी नीड मैनिकन हम पोटर इंसर्शन नडल इंसर्शन कैसे सिखाएंगे हाउ कुड वी रियली टेक डेमोन्स्ट्रेशन एंड रिटर्न डेमो एंड देन वी हैड दिस लाइक यू नो वी नीड टू मेक श्योर दैट यू नो रिटर्न डेमो इज देयर कॉम्पिटेंसी बेस्ड असेसमेंट आप कैसे करोगे यू नीड कॉम्पिटेंट कॉम्पिटेंसी स्किल साइन ऑफ तो फिर देन वी वर लाइक यू नो थिंकिंग अबाउट इट एंड देन यू नो वी केम अप विद एन आइडिया वी आस्ट फॉर अ सॉफ्ट कॉटन डॉल नहीं होती है जो लंबी लंबी कॉटन डॉल वेरी इजीली वेरी चीप एंड देन वी कॉल फॉर इट हमने मंगवाई 
पोटक कैथर एक एक जो पेशेंट से निकला था उसको स्टरलाइज करवाया क्लीन करवाया एंड देन वी मेड अ कट स्लिट उसके चेस्ट साइड पे लेफ्ट साइड पे वी इंसर्टेड पोटक कैथर लाइन इन इट एंड देन वी पुट सम स्टफिंग एंड देन रीस्टेस्ट we had a mannequin needle insertion almost physically for 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 many year, years we used that that doll as a practice for nurses to learn how to insert and feel the porta catheter so innovation is there it's just that we need to think out of the box and think that it could be done and we can also do things so i'm just going to talk a, a little about what are the top trends in oncology since we are you know want to work in oncology so what is that is growing so technology in healthcare is growing you know just be sure that e medicine electronic communication is becoming more and more widely used and it is the best way method aajkal to baat is pe ho rahi hai ki har nurse ke paas smartphone hota hai to system pe usko de diya jaye system is pe diya jaye taki documentation there and then ho easily right it's easy accessible you do something and you document it so there is no lag between the documentation and practice so this is growing so we can think about innovation in that particular aspect also because we all have smartphones then there is increased number of clinical trials unfortunately we don't have this in pakistan but at one point we have to think about it we have to think about nurses doing research symptom management i mean you know somebody could take up the sexual assessment also how many people do sexual assessment how many people don't do this and symptom assessment i mean you know i'm sure there is no tool used for nausea assessment do we use it no we are still behind we don't use neuropathy hum nahi check karte nurses don't use it nurses don't do this ye assessments abhi hamare bahut dur hain we just are you know ab ab pews and mews ke zamane mein hame to pews and mews sikhane mein mushkil hoti hai so we are like you know behind it we have to learn how we can implement those things and we can learn and we can teach others about that and then care navigators i talked about yesterday and then i talked about invasive procedures that nurses are more involved in it and then precision medicine is on the rise precision medicine yani ki you know i we were talking about like you know uh, last week i was in a uh, in a meeting and we were discussing that you know now more and more genetics lifestyle and environmental you know every treatment plan is tailor made yani ki us bande ke liye hota hai ek particular cheez nahi hoti hai uski apni life kaisi hai uske more and more targeted therapies are there more and more immunotherapies are there and we have to keep up with all the trends because we are here and we are here to work for more years so for that we need to understand all those things which are changing developing anti cancer therapies i talked about there's more immunotherapy more targeted therapies and we have to learn about those things car t therapy when we are going to learn because these things are coming every 3 years up to you get okay, oncology treatment we i was talking to breast consultant uh, oncologist and she said ki ab to har saal hamare bahut sare treatment protocols change ho jata hai so you know you can't make sure ki maine 5 saal padha tha to bas khatam to everything is changing so we have to keep up with that and then quality if you talk about chakat khan and a khan university hospital you know they are giving quality nursing care and this is why they are a, a prestigious organization we are all sitting here because chakat khan am provided a platform for us to discuss these things for nurses we have to understand that there, there is incentive for quality quality means everything so you know quality care is something which we have to work together and we have to look forward and there is will be more incentive for quality oncology nursing kabhi bhi nahi ek to nursing i always tell people that nursing berozgar nahi rehti hai na duniya ke kisi kone mein chale jao nursing ko job mil jayegi i have my colleagues my friends who who went to usa uk and other countries and they were like you know कि हमें कोई जॉब नहीं मिल रही है अच्छा दे वर एपिडियोमोलॉजिस्ट किया मास्टर्स किया एंड दे वर लाइक अभी हम तो बस हम तो एपिडियोमोलॉजिस्ट हो गए एंड देन दे वेंट टू यू वेस्ट एंड दे ऑल कॉल्ड मी अप एंड यू नो दे डिस्कस एंड दे सेट अब हम नर्सिंग का इम्तहान दे रहे हैं क्योंकि हमें बेड साइड जॉब मिल जाएगी दूसरी जॉब नहीं मिलेगी तो दिस इज हाउ यू नो इम्पॉर्टेंट यू आर and this is how in demand you are so it's not going somewhere else it's just that you have to make sure that you are going to stay here 
and you have to work towards this. And this is how you are going to grow. And this is the profession you have to take. And then you have to understand your importance also. Because, you know, physician will be here. Physicians are here to treat. But nursing care is as important as physician. So you have to make sure that you are, you know you're a high in demand. Holistic care. We talked about it. Neelam gave us a very good uh, I mean, you know, idea of the new things, which is not talked about in, in nursing, compassion. I mean, you know, sexual care is something which we all avoid. But this is something which comes in holistic care, physiological care, psychological care. But it's time that we understand, we talk about it and we practice that also. So this is my last slide. And this, uh, the oncology nurses will only grow in their roles and continue to be indispensable members of their team. So thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Dr. Rehana Punjani, Additional Director of Nursing, Dow University Hospital, Karachi, for presenting this very important topic, innovation and inspiration, celebrating the impact of oncology nurses globally and in Pakistan, and for highlighting the innovations made by nurses globally. You know, oncology nursing is a very uh, highly specialized and challenging area. It's not that you just need knowledge. You also need passion to be an oncology nurse. And uh, we are privileged in Pakistan, definitely, to have Shokot Khanam Memorial Cancer Hospital, uh, and which is not, a, a, you know, a local level hospital, but also an international level uh, quality hospital we have in Pakistan. And also, we understand that in Pakistan, nursing research is still in very infancy stage. We need to develop research nurses. We need to have specialized area and to develop specialized research area, like oncology nursing is one of the areas and uh, other areas as well. So thank you. This presentation was a uh, great food uh, for thought. So the next presenter is Mr. Shamsul Huda, Director of Nursing, Ayub Teaching Hospital, Abdabad, and he's going to present nurse patient communication, impacts on patient satisfaction, a systematic review. Yeah. Uh, Honorable Dr. Raisa Gul uh, and all other audience, Assalamu Alaikum. So the, my topic is nurse patient communication, patient satisfaction in oncology setting, systematic review. Uh, so my research question uh, was, what is the relationship between the quality of nurse patient communication and patient satisfaction in an oncology unit? Uh, First, I will discuss about the research question, then research uh, search strategies, systematic review methodology, extract, and then results. Uh, inclusion and exclusion criteria. Uh, so the population was oncology patient in a hospital. The phenomenon of interest was quality of nurse, patient communication, and patient satisfaction. Study design, quantitative language English, Studies conducted to test the effectiveness of communication skills training course in oncology settings. These studies were excluded. Review uh, excluded studies which involved study conducted using simulated oncology patients. Communication at the end of life care. Studies to validate assessment tools for communication. Systematic reviews. Qualitative studies. So... The search strategy aimed to find published studies and papers. Three-step approach has been adopted. Initial search on Google Scholar and Science Direct was undertaken. Analysis of the words contained in the title and abstract and keywords of the article. Using the keywords and other extracted words, further search was made using Boolean operators. So these are keywords, patient communication, effective communications, communication skills, nurse-patient interactions, patient satisfaction, satisfaction levels, patient experiences, 
क्वालिटी ऑफ केयर ऑनकोलॉजी केयर सर यूनिट ऑनकोलॉजी वार्ड कैंसर ट्रीटमेंट सेंटर ऑनकोलॉजी हॉस्पिटल सो दीज वर using after using the boolean operators so the result terms come up like this nurse patient communication and cancer care or oncology patient so these were used to search the literature an initial search of the literature produced 35 potential papers with title is an abstract which met the criteria of the 35 potential papers 25 were found to be qualitative in nature or opinion paper thus were excluded in the remaining 10 4 papers were excluded as they consist of reviews finally six papers were selected for the review in general the included studies involved oncology nurses and oncology inpatient or oncology survivor patient from a wide variety of diagnoses who were at various stages of the disease and were receiving different treatments these studies were also conducted from across an international spectrum india in indonesia us hong kong etc assessment methodology quality studies were assessed for methodological validity before inclusion into the review a matrix was developed included title purpose methodology and results six studies have been included in the review, uh, review. all of the six studies were quantitative studies and uske jo full text article thi usko retrieve kar yeah due to nature of the review most of the studies with the inclusion exclusion criteria were non experimental in nature hence statistical pooling of the data was not possible thus the finding were presented in narrative form as these studies were descriptive in nature and used different outcomes myers statistical pooling of the data was not possible hence the finding were presented in narrative form So the first uh, patient satisfactions. Nurses practice is patient centered, hence one of the indicator of nursing care is patient satisfaction. So patient satisfaction at the end of the day, we all are striving for that. But patient satisfaction is an objective thing. So patient satisfaction means judgment of the care received by patient during the stay in the hospital. those patients who are satisfied from communication of nurses are more inclined to follow the instructions so we always discuss about the uh, that patient are not following the instructions so if they are satisfied from the communication of the nurses they are more inclined to follow the regime oncological patients are experiencing a challenging situation as they are in pain in new setting and we are about the process procedure and future course of action thus nurse play a pivotal role to orient the patient and facilitate them when and where is required so it is very important that when they are in pain they are in new settings they are unaware about the future course of action so the nurse is the only source agar usko sahi tarike se bataya jaye ki abhi kya ho raha hai aage future mein kya hoga process kya hoga to at least unka pain aur is kam ho jata hai pain nurses communication and patient satisfaction effective communication affects patient satisfaction the better communication is carried out the greater the patient satisfaction will be when which will enhance patient trust and recovery the sbar communication method is a proven framework for communication hence the nurses need to focus and reflect on their way of communication with patients so we have always when we were even at the B, uh, ms level so dr raisa always told us to reflect i think one of the best way to improve your communication with patient is to reflect if we do regular reflections with our interaction with patient so we with passage of time we will improve our communication best time for communication the level of satisfaction with nurse patient communication can improve with adequate communication at the time of admission and with frequent interaction with patient अब बार बार उनके पास जाना उनसे बातें करना और एडमिशन के टाइम पे चूंकि पेशेंट बिल्कुल नया होता है हॉस्पिटल के लिए उसको बहुत सारी चीजों का पता नहीं होता तो ये इसका इम्पैक्ट ज्यादा होता है हाउ आर द शॉर्टेज कुड प्रिवेंट नर्सेज फ्रॉम फ्रीक्वेंट इंटरेक्शन विद पेशेंट बट ऑन अदर हैंड वी हैव नर्सेज शॉर्टेज इन द कंट्री सो दैट मे बी अंड्रेंस दस इट इज इम्पेरेटिव टू प्रोवाइड एसेंशियल इन्फॉर्मेशन एट द टाइम ऑफ एडमिशन 
ہم بہت زیادہ ٹاسک اورینٹڈ زیادہ ہوتے ہیں نرسز کہ بس مجھے اپنی کام مکمل کرنا ہے پیشن کو سنتے بھی کم ہیں اور اگر سنتے بھی ہیں تو بس ریئل سینس میں جس ایکٹیو لیسننگ کہتے ہیں وہ تو نہیں ہوتی سو دا بیسٹ وے کہ آپ مریض کو ایکٹیولی سنا کریں ٹاسک تو کمپلیٹ لازمی کرنا ہے بیکاز دیٹ از این امپورٹنٹ اسپیکٹ آف آور جاب لیکن اس کے سائڈ بائی سائڈ اس کا کرنا ہے فیکٹرز افیکٹ نرس پیشن کمیونیکیشن دا اسٹڈی شوز دیٹ گریٹنگ سلام کرنا فریکوینٹ انٹریکشن ان اسپیکنگ ان اے لینگویج دیٹ پیشن انڈرسٹینڈ ہیو اے ویری پازیٹیو افیکٹ آن نرس پیشن کمیونیکیشن اور اسی کنٹیکس میں آئی واز ریڈنگ این ایرانین اسٹڈیز اور انہوں نے جب اسٹڈیز کی تو نائنٹی فور پرسینٹ پیشنٹ نے کہا کہ نرس نے کبھی آپ نے آپ کو انٹروڈیوز ہی نہیں کیا کہ وہ کون ہے مطلب ان سے جب پوچھا کہ آپ کی نرس کون ہے تو دے ور ان اویئر سو ہم سب کو ایٹ لیسٹ از فرسٹ اسٹیپ جب بھی پیشنٹ کے پاس جاتے ہیں تو اپنا انٹروڈکشن تو کرا لے کہ میں آپ کی نرس ہوں میرا نام یہ ہے تو دیٹ ول ہیو ڈیفینیٹلی اے پازیٹیو افیکٹ ایٹ پیشنٹ ہیز اے ڈیفرینٹ ایکسپیکٹیشن یسٹرڈے عامر عبد اللہ نے بڑا اچھا پریزنٹیشن دی انگیجمنٹ کی تو اسی کنٹیکس میں ہر مریض کی آپ سے ڈیفرینٹ سم میں سیٹسفائڈ اونلی پرووائڈنگ ٹائم کیئرس لیکن دوسرے بھی ہوتے ہیں جن کو انٹریکشن سے زیادہ وہ آپ سے کچھ ایکسپیکٹ کرتے ہیں ہند دا نرس شوڈ ٹیک ایفرٹس ٹو فیل دا پیشنٹ یونیک ابھی ڈاکٹر ریحانہ پنجوانی بھی کہہ رہی تھی کہ ہمیں کسٹمائز چیزوں کو ڈیولپ کرنا چاہیے تو پیشنٹ کی بھی یہ خواہش ہوتی ہے کہ میں یونیک فیل کروں مطلب اس کو یونیک کنسیڈر کیا جائے جب آپ اس کو توجہ دیتے ہیں تو وہ یونیک اس کی فیلنگ ہوتی ہے اور پھر چیزیں بہتر کمیونیکیشن انوالو ان ڈیسیجن میکنگ ان کو آپشن دیے جائیں کہ مختلف آپشن ہیں اس میں سے اے بی سی اور آپ اس میں کون سا پسند کرتے ہیں اسے ڈسکس کریں ان پرووائڈ انفارمیشن ریگارڈنگ دا ٹریٹمنٹ اینڈ پلان آف کیئر تو جب میں لٹریچر ریویو کر رہا تھا اکثر مریضوں کو ان کے پلان آف کیئر کے بارے میں بالکل ان اویئر ہوتی ہے یہ اسٹڈی زیادہ تر ویسٹ کی ہے پاکستان میں تو ہم سب جانتے ہیں کہ میجارٹی پیشنٹس کو میں بات کروں گا پبلک سیکٹرز کی کہ ان کو کورس آف ایکشن کا پتہ نہیں ہوتا کہ آگے کیا ہونے جا رہا ہے میرے ساتھ تو وہ ان کی انزائٹی اور اس کو اور بڑھا دیتے ہیں پھر ایفیکٹ آف گڈ نرس پیشن کمیونیکیشن اسٹرینتھنگ نرس پیشن کمیونیکیشن پروموٹ کمیونیکیشن ایلیمنیٹ بیریئرز اینڈ امپروو پیشنٹ ٹرسٹ نرسز اینڈ فلی ریفلیکٹ نرسز ورکنگ ویلیو اب ہماری کنٹیکس میں بہت زیادہ امپورٹنٹ ہے اب تو اللہ کا شکر ہے کہ کسی نہ کسی لیول پہ نرسز کی ریکوگنیشن نیشنلی ہوتی ہے لیکن پھر بھی اس لیول پہ نہیں ہے جس جیسے ان کے سروسز ہے اور وہ کیوں نہیں ہے کہ ہم کسی کو بتا ہی نہیں پا رہے ہیں کہ ہماری ویلیو کیا ہے تو ورکنگ ویلیو تب ہوگی جب ہم ان کے ساتھ کمیونیکیشن کریں گے اپنا پلان ان کے ساتھ شیئر کریں گے ان کو اپنی اس کا بتائیں گے وچ از کنڈیو فار دا پازیٹیو امیج آف نرسز اور اس کا جو ہوگا رزلٹ یہ ہوگا کہ نرسز کا بھی امیج بہتر ہوگا اور اوور آل جس ہاسپٹل میں آپ کام کر رہے ہیں ڈیفینیٹلی ان کا بھی امیج بہتر ہوگا Quality of discussion between patient and healthcare providers. The study concluded that only limited portion, proportion of cancer survivors reported discussion with healthcare providers after diagnosis. Hardly these survivors were briefed about long-term effects of treatment, including physical and psychological effects that fundamentally shape their quality of life. This is very important, the physical or psychological effect. Or when it comes to cancer, it is very important. Thus, the quality of communication is at suboptimal level. The training module for oncology nurses. Different training module is in practice to enhance the communication skills of oncology nurses. The study found that comfort curriculum has improved and equipped the nurses' communication to further train other nurses. Most of the institutes have high focus on communication. However, there is still need to develop customized communication as per their needs. اب ہر ہاسپٹل کی ہر انسٹیٹیوٹ کی اپنی پالیسیز ہوتی ہے اپنی ریکوائرمنٹ ہوتی ہے اور ان کی جو پاپولیشن ہوتی ہے پیشن ان کی بھی اپنی وہ ہوتی ہے تو اس حساب سے ان کو چاہیے کہ کسٹمائز ماڈیول ڈیولپ کرے کیپنگ ان ویو دیئر اون نیڈس اور اس پہ اسٹاف کی ٹریننگ کروا دے دا کنٹینٹ ایریاز فار انکالوجی نرسز اور بریکنگ بیڈ نیوز ہیلتھ لٹریسی کلچر مائنڈ فلنس سپورٹ فار فیملی کیئر گیورز گولز آف کیئر پیشن سینٹر نرس ٹرانزیشن ان کیئر کنورسیشن ٹیم کمیونیکیشن ڈائگنوسس ٹریٹمنٹ کنورسیشن سروائور شپ کیئر پلاننگ ریکرنس کنورسیشن اینڈ آف لائف کمیونیکیشن اینڈ گریف دا پیشنٹ نرس کمیونیکیشن از این امپورٹنٹ اسپیکٹ آف دا پیشنٹ سیٹسفیکشن افیکٹو کمیونیکیشن ہیز اے پازیٹیو افیکٹ آن پیشنٹ ٹرسٹ اینڈ ریکیولی بٹ ایچ پیشنٹ ہیز ڈفرینٹ ایکسپیکٹیشن ہنس دا نرس از نیڈ ٹو آئیڈینٹیفائی دا پیشنٹ ایکسپیکٹیشن اینڈ دین پرووائڈ سم پیشنٹ اونلی نیڈ اسینشیل کیئر ویئر ادرز میں ہیو اے لسٹ آف ایکسپیکٹیشنس 
اور یہ ہوتا ہے بعض اوقات مریض کا کنسرن ہوتا ہے کہ اس کو میڈیسن ملی اس کی مانیٹرنگ ہو گئی وہ خوش ہوتے لیکن ادر مریض ہوتے وہ اس سے خوش نہیں ہوتے اور ہمیں یہ آئیڈینٹیفائی کرنا چاہیے دا لیول آف سیٹسفیکشن کین امپروو ود افیکٹو کمیونیکیشن ایٹ دا ٹائم آف ایڈمیشن ان کمیونیکیشن اباؤٹ پلان آف کیئر ایٹ ٹائم نرسز مے ناٹ ہیو ٹائم ٹو فریکوینٹلی انٹریکٹ اینڈ ایکسپلین دی پلان آف کیئر more over the patients need to be informed about treatment physical and psychological effects of the treatment and how these effects can be managed this will result in enhancement of patient trust along with acknowledgement of nurses services nurses need to actively listen to patient in their concerns aur yahan pe sabse bada jo usko kehte hai ki ji nurses shortage hai definitely hum sab mein pata hai ki nurses shortage hai lekin jo bhi hamara time hota hai hum usko effectively kaise utilize kar sakte hain کیا آنےسٹلی اگر ہم بتائیں کہ اس کو افیکٹو یوٹیلائز کر کے ہم بہت کچھ چینج نہیں کر سکتے کمیونیکیشن پلان آف کیئر ان سمپل لینگویج جو پلان ہے اس کو سمپل بتا دے کسٹمائز ٹریننگ ماڈیول اینڈ کمیونیکیشن فار نرسز ورکنگ ان انکولوجی سٹنگس لائک ادر کمپیٹنسیز دا کمیونیکیشن ٹریننگ ماڈیول مے بی انکلوڈیڈ ان دا لسٹ آف کمپیٹنسی مینڈیٹری فار نرسز جس طرح انیشلی اورینٹیشن پہ ہوتا ہے بہت سارے ماڈیول کا تو کمیونیکیشن والا جو ماڈیول ہے جو کہ اسپیسیفک کسٹمائز ٹو دا انسٹیٹیوٹ ہو اس کو ڈیولپ کرنا چاہیے اور اس کا حصہ بھی ہونا چاہیے اور اس کی فالو اپ ہونا چاہیے اسٹریٹجیز نیڈ ٹو بی اڈاپٹڈ فار دا ویل بینگ آف نرسز جیسے سمیع اللہ نے یہ اسٹڈی ڈسکس کیا تھا بڑی ڈیٹیل میں concluding the effective communication has a positive effect on patient satisfaction nurses need to take efforts to feel the patient's unique to feel the patient unique this is very important term involve them in decision making again very important share plan of care regular customized training sessions need to be organized for patient to equip them with skills and competencies of effective communication thank you Thank you, Shamsa Loda. I think with, you enlightened us with the very important communication skills and active listening is one of that. And I completely agree with all your suggestions and conclusions. We should really work hard on training our more nurses to understand that communication is very important in patient care. And in, in oncology, I think half of the disease and half of the treatment is dependent on the good communication. Mm -hmm. So with this, I would like to invite our next speaker, which is Umar Khattab. and he's from Shifa College of Nursing and he's going to talk about nurses perception and experience of providing intimate care to patient of the opposite gender umar khatab thank you bismillahir rahman rahim uh, dear guests uh, my mentor dr raisa gul and other colleagues assalam alaikum uh, So the topic of my study is this nurses perception and experiences of provide intimate care to patient of the opposite gender at a tertiary care hospital in Islamabad. Uh, these are the different uh, points that, in the outline that will be discussed in the remaining slides. So uh, reflecting on the previous uh, presentation on the nurses role in the patient care. So As discussed in the last presentation, that nurses are expected to provide the holistic care to the patient. So this holistic approach requires, uh, uh, includes different aspects. That is the psychological aspect, spiritual aspect, but the physical aspect. And this physical aspect re required, uh, includes the intimate care. And uh, as highlighted uh, in this study, this intimate care requires the close contact with the patient and exposure of the patient body parts uh, and also involves touch. Uh, intimate care is an integral part of the nursing practice and an important component of the physical care, but as it intrudes into the uh, intimacy of the patient, therefore it can be discomforting for the patient as well as for the nurses. Uh, this is a sensitive aspect of the physical care, and this could be aggravated by the social cultural aspects uh, considering the uh, context of like Pakistan. So different cultural aspects uh, have an influence on these factors and its sensitivity increases when it involves intimate care to the patients of the opposite gender. So as a result, the nurses delegate this task to the healthcare assistants or the family members and they do not involve uh, personally in those care, those care where the exposure of the body is required and which have a, a negative impact on the quality of care. So the problem statement 
then the nurses role uh, is very important in the provision of quality health care and usually they are the first one to respond to the patient needs because they are always present at the bedside However, as a manager, uh, nurse manager of the emergency department at Hershey or hospital, I uh, confronted with th this issue that nurses are reluctant to provide uh, intimate care when uh, the patient is the opposite gender. Uh, as a result of this reluctance, delays experience in essential procedures and uh, uh, Diagnostic and interventional procedure, which not only demonstrate a neglect of the care, but also uh, could have a dire consequences because if this is a, an important procedure uh, like the ACG and uh, any other procedures so it have a dire consequences on the patient care. So I mean, this issue becomes more challenging when there is an absence of the clear policy guidelines at the level of the institution. So the purpose of this study was to explore nurses' perception and, and their experiences of providing intimate care to patients of the opposite gender at a tertiary care hospital. And this study focused to answer these two questions. So what are their perception regarding uh, perception and experiences of providing intimate care to the patients of the opposite gender? And what are the challenges that they face while providing intimate care? So those uh, participants were included in this study who have at least a one year clinical experience as a bedside nurse in the critical area. Uh, ethical considerations was followed, approval obtained from the uh, IRB, uh, permission was taken from the chief nursing officer and uh, informed written consent was obtained from the participants. This, uh, for this study, a qualitative approach with the uh, descriptive design was uh, followed. Uh, population, as mentioned earlier, that was the nurses working in the critical care areas of a tertiary care hospital in Islamabad. Uh, sample was 14 nurses from different critical care units, as mentioned. Uh, the sample technique that was purposive and snowball used, and data was collected through face to face in depth interview. For analysis of the data, uh, the manual content analysis method was followed as described by the Chris Will and Chris Will, as highlighted by organization the data, reading the data, and uh, coding and generating the categories and description of the categories. Uh, to ensure the trustworthiness of the study, the Lincoln and Guba criterion 1994 was followed and each criteria was made sure by following uh, the measures as highlighted in the slide. So uh, the following in the next slide, we'll discuss the findings of the study. So analysis of the participant, uh, analysis of participant interviews led to the three categories. That's uh, comprehension of intimate care, feeling sense of insecurity, and dealing with the issue with the subcategories as mentioned and will be discussed in the coming slide in detail. So the first subcategory uh, of the comprehension of intimate care was exposure and touch. So the participant uh, highlighted that intimate care requires the nurses to have a close contact with their patients and it also in, uh, require them to expose their body and it may also involve touch is mentioned by supported by the participant uh, court. The second subcategory that's the envision of the personal space uh, as the uh, uh, provision of the physical care and uh, close care require the nurses to have a close contact with their patients. So this close intimacy means crossing the patient personal space involves envision into to their privacy as supported by the uh, participant court. Uh, the second category, this is the feeling sense of insecurity because all the participants were reflecting on their experiences. So uh, they uh, they showed a sense of insecurity when they are providing such care to the patients, of the, especially to the opposite gender. And uh, the subcategory is the, they also reflected on the reasons of those, the sense of insecurity. So they, the first major reason that was identified was the cultural and religious norms. So those norms have a strong influence on the nurses' feeling when they're providing intimate care to the patients. And due to these cultural and religious values, nurses feeling discomfort and, sense, discomfort and sense of insecurity while providing care to the opposite gender when the nature of care is uh, intimate. The second subcategory that was highlighted by the participant because uh, the cultural norms and all uh, the religious values that exist in the system. But the second important thing that highlighted the reason that was the lack of their preparation for that care. Because uh, this issue exists 
care is the, this is a part of the care, but nobody talk about and their institution are in uh, other levels. So the nurses highlighted that they had no formal training or education regarding intimate care. And this lack of training make this task a challenging for them as highlighted by this, uh, supported by the court. Uh, the third category is their emotional responses because they also uh, use several verbs when they were discussing their uh, challenges and reflecting on their experiences. So they use the reluctance, embarrassment, uh, discomfort. So intimate care to the opposite gender was acknowledged a difficult task or due to all of these challenges and fear of being misconstrued by the patient and relatives while exposure or trust is required. So this was reflected by both of the uh, nurses of the both genders. The uh, last category, this is the dealing with the issue. They also uh, address this issue in their, uh, in their narrative, say how we could deal this issue in future for the future nurses. So uh, it, uh, they what they did currently and they are also suggest for the future. So they use some, some effective strategy to deal with the issue. They use a chaperoning in communication with the patient that help them in providing such intimate care uh, is uh, supported by the participant court. And but they also confess that at the initial stage of their career, they use some ineffective strategy to deal with this issue. And those strategies were escape or avoidance of their, their care. Uh, they were only focusing uh, on the um, on their strategies. They were trying to avoid the care, and so somebody else provide that care. So these were some ineffective strategy they that they used. And then they also suggested the way forward to how we can deal this issue for the future nurses. So they suggested some training and continuing education for the nurses. Uh, they highlighted uh, different areas. The students should be, nurses students should be given uh, a proper training at the institution level. And then there should be uh, some mechanism at the uh, healthcare organization so they could pro provide them help when they come to the clinical area. Uh, these are the different uh, strengths and limitation of the study uh, because we, uh, as a strength, we included the both gender of the study and they have varied level of experiences. Uh, participants also highlight uh, uh, appreciated exploration of the topic and also uh, um, valuable suggestions are given and some limitation that this is uh, conducted in a single institution and only nurses' perspectives were uh, taken because of the limitation of the time as this was a master study. Uh, the recommendation of the study is nurses should be given not only the theoretical knowledge but also the practical skills through the hands-on session at the institution and uh, as highlighted in the last presentation the role of communication so the participant found this is a very important strategy and effective strategy so they should be given the due importance in the institution to work on the nurses communication level and also suggestion for the hospital administration because uh, they need to uh, make sure the presence of the both male and female nurses, the orientation policy, and also for uh, how to deal those patients in the clinical area. Uh, also for the nurse manager to ensure the uh, when they are making the assignments and the environment should be supportive for the novice nurses. So conclusion of the study is intimate care is a sensitive issue of the patient care as it involves intrusion of the patient privacy. Thus directly related to their comfort and both the nurses as well. This issue becomes more complex when intimate care is required for the opposite gender. In addition to the personal discomfort, the socio-cultural norms, religious values come into play that limit or prohibit uh, the interaction with the opposite gender. But there may be certain situation when that intimate care of the opposite gender may not be optional and you have no choice or you need to provide the service. So therefore, the nurses must be aware of the challenges and implication of intimate care to the patients of the opposite gender. They must have the required skill to deal with the issue, uh, amicably be ensuring the patient's safety and satisfaction. An appropriate staffing system and policies are also necessary for the patient to ensure patient safety as well as for the staff safety. Thank you. With the acknowledgement of my supervisor, Dr. Ray Sakul. Thank you uh, very much, Umar Khattab, sir. Uh, the next topic is knowledge, attitude, and practices of oncology nurses regarding handling of cytotoxic drugs in tertiary care hospital. The topic will be presented by Naseem Akhtar from Shaipat Tamiri Millat University, Islamabad, Pakistan. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Naseem. I am from Shifa International Hospital, Islamabad. 
Uh, today I am going to present my study. The study topic is knowledge, attitude, practice of oncology nurses regarding handling of cytotoxic drugs. These are the outline of study. Background. On chemotherapy is one of the frequent treatment used to destroy the cancer cells. The drugs used for this treatment are known as cytotoxic drugs. Multiple chemotherapy regimes are given to cancer patients over a prolonged length of time. Exposure of these anti neoplastic agents may include toxicological effects in humans such as carcinogenicity, teratogenicity, and mutagenicity. The most uh, important population to expose these drugs are nurses. Nurses are involved in handling and administration, managing cytotoxic waste, spillage, and patient excreta during their nursing care. These are chance of committing errors because of knowledge deficit and negative attitude of nurses about handling these drugs. Nursing practices play a significant part in reducing or eliminating potential hazards. These uh, potential hazards not only harming the patients, but as well as the nurses and the contamination of environment. Problem statement. Unsafe handling of cytotoxic drug is caused by lack of understanding and failure to follow the policies. There is increase of adverse event related to transportation, administration, and spillage of cytotoxic agents. Need to provide a safe and healthy work environment for chemotherapy nurses. Significant of the study. Identify the gap in knowledge, attitude, and practice regarding handling cytotoxic drugs. It may help to modify the existing nursing orientation package based on the study results. This study was help organization level for providing a safe, healthy work environment for chemotherapy nurses. This study helped to create awareness of influencing and developing nurses' compliance to safety behavior. Purpose of the study. To assess the knowledge, attitude, and practice of handling cytotoxic drugs among oncology nurses and to assess their association between these variables. These are the study questions. There are four questions which we investigate in the uh, study. That is the level of knowledge, what is the attitude, and what is, are the practices of oncology nurses in private tertiary care hospital Islamabad, and what are the association between these variables. Research methodology. Cross-sectional analytical study design was used uh, in tertiary care hospital Islamabad, and the study population is Oncology nurses, sample size 64 nurses, and purpose sampling, sampling was the sampling technique. Eligibility criteria. Are registered nurses at least six months working experience in oncology are excluded in the study, and the uh, nursing students and nurse managers are excluded from the study. The recru recruitment process of the participant permission letter from obtained from the chief nursing officers, head nurses of concerned department approached for permission. A flyer containing basic information was pasted on the notice board for the participants who are voluntarily uh, participate in the study. Participants were approached by using WhatsApp and email. Tool. There are two tools uh, used in the study uh, along with the demographic sheets, that is age, gender, year of experience in oncology and training, etc. For knowledge and attitude, uh, there are self-administrated questionnaire was used to assess the knowledge and attitude. For practice, there are observational checklists was used to assess the nurse's practice. Data collection. The data was collected by a trained data collector for knowledge and attitude questionnaire was filled at the end of shift and it uh, for observation checklist, it took approximately two conservative uh, observation were recorded and the one observation took uh, two to three uh, hours per minute. Data analysis. Data was analyzed through SPSS version 25 frequency and percentage for the demographic variable and uh, uh, descriptive statistic. Chi-square test was used to inferential statistic and for associations. 
table and graphs was used for data presentation. Ethical consideration, uh, inst institutional review board approval obtained, approval for chief nursing officer, informed written consent will be obtained from the participant, voluntarily participant and right to uh, withdraw for the study at any time. Study purpose, potential risk and benefits will be explained to the participant, privacy and confidentiality ensured. Now we are discussing the results of study. There are three uh, criteria. Um, there are the cut of value of uh, our study and, uh, where we uh, uh, check the level of knowledge, attitude and practice. For the knowledge, uh, if the participant had less than 60-50% uh, score consider as a poor and more than 50% to 80% is a good. And for attitude, uh, we calculate the mean and then less than mean is considered as a poor and more than mean is considered as a good attitude. For the practice, uh, the cutoff value is uh, less than 60 is a poor uh, practice and more than 60 consider as a good practice. Overall, uh, overall knowledge of the uh, nurses about handling cytotoxic drugs uh, that are 28% uh, high score for uh, knowledge nurses got good score. And as well as the attitude, there are 58% uh, nurses got uh, um, uh, high score in uh, attitude. Practice. Practice uh, will further uh, construct in four uh, statements. That is nurses safety, patient safety, environmental safety, and safe administration of cytotoxic drugs. In these constructs, uh, nurses have uh, poor knowledge scores in especially uh, environmental safety. Association of uh, um, uh, variables with the demographics. There are two variables, uh, um, gender and training in oncology are strongly associated with the knowledge and uh, training is uh, um, also associated with the attitude. But uh, experience and training in undergraduate is significant associated with practice. Association between outcomes. Only knowledge and attitude were associated with uh, p-value of 0 0.02. Recommendation. Clinical practice. There are uh, consistent and periodic, periodic monitoring of the uh, nurses for uh, ensuring the safety compliance and practices. Research. There are uh, further more research uh, are required uh, to evaluate the uh, perception of uh, barrier or, uh, for nurses' perception that is barrier affecting uh, to ensure the uh, compliance. And education. There are need of in-service education and training to uh, ensure the compliance and safe monitoring. As already discussed, uh, Mem Rehana in uh, his presentation, that uh, there is a huge difference between knowledge and practice. And I think this was proven in my study. The uh, nurse's knowledge has uh, good, but the practice are poor because uh, uh, there are so many challenges in uh, uh, facing the nurses. Uh, one of uh, them is uh, uh, the shortage of nurses and the workforce uh, and the uh, training, especially because uh, there is a lack of training, especially in the oncology nurses and the resources as well. Conclusion, uh, nurses display a strong knowledge based on the positive attitude toward managing uh, and cytotoxic drugs, partially ap application of this knowledge for lacking among the nurses. <clears throat> The study revealed a uh, statistically significant difference between the knowledge and attitude, but there is no difference uh, uh, with knowledge and practice. Favorable attitude of nurses can be contribute their solid uh, knowledge base. Implementation and monitoring mechanism is crucial to improve the and compliance of uh, nurses' practice in handling cytotoxic drugs. <clears throat> Thank you so much. Thank you, Naseem, for presenting another important study on knowledge, attitude, and practices of oncology nurses regarding handling cytotoxic drugs uh, in Islamabad. So the next topic is family caregivers' experiences of caring for cancer patients in tertiary care hospitals in Islamabad 
to be presented by Tahira Batul uh, of Shifa College of Nursing, Islamabad. Tahira, please. यहीं से नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन अस्सलाम वालेकुम एंड गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल आई एम तायरा बतूल फ्रॉम शिफा कॉलेज ऑफ नर्सिंग एंड माय स्टडी टाइटल इज कैंसर केयर गिवर्स एक्सपीरियंसेस ऑफ केयरिंग for cancer patients in tertiary care hospital islamabad pakistan my thesis supervisor is professor dr khairun nisad hamani okay, this is my session outline study background cancer badly affects the physical economical Uh, psychological and uh, emotional conditions of not only the patients but the family and uh, loved ones who are involved in caring prolonged hospital stay increases the caregiver's responsibilities which emphasizes the family caregiver's role as a patient support system problem statement i added my personal observation i observed caregivers of cancer patients who were facing many challenges these family caregivers have to manage their personal lives as well as care for, care for their patients strong familial ties are a part of asian culture the caregivers feel to have a moral duty to provide care and are juggling multiple tasks in in the hospital leading to compromised patient care and unmet needs of family caregivers most of the studies have measured the phenomena of anxiety and depression of the caregivers but not the overall experiences therefore a qualitative study is needed to be done study significance the study findings may help in understanding caregivers experiences of caring for cancer patients including the challenges they face the results of this study may contribute to developing strategies for family caregivers to enable them to cope with the caregiving challenges so that they can care for themselves and their cancer patients more effectively the purpose of this study was to explore the experiences of caregivers of cancer patients in tertiary care hospitals islamabad pakistan and the research question is also what are the experiences of family caregivers of cancer patients an exploratory descriptive qualitative study design was implied and the data was collected from 16 family caregivers of cancer patients from two tertiary care hospitals islamabad pakistan and the purpose of sample and throughout the study by guba and lincoln 1994 process now in shortly we are going towards the findings and discussion of the study uh, the demographic characteristics of the participants uh, eight participants were from the public sector hospital and eight were from the private sector hospital and the age range is from 19 to 58 years and uh, more demographic data included the marital status of the participants educational status relationship with the patients and source of income five categories were made after the data analysis the categories are uh, listed here uh, number one category was caregiving responsibilities then grief and sorrow socio economic burden health care management challenges and coping mechanisms
I will discuss each category with sub categories one by one. My first category was caregiving responsibilities, and the sub category was acceptable tasks. These sub category included the tasks that are culturally accepted, like feeding, changing clothes, toileting, and giving baths, as it is indicated by one of the family caregivers' quotation. He said, uh, I feed him, the patient, take him to the washroom, wash him, and sometime his stool passed out in the trousers, then wash that too. He passes out the stool anywhere he wants, then I have to wash that all. The results of my study are inconsistent with the other studies, Ismail uh, 2023 and uh, Telegenin uh, et al. 90, uh, 2021. Subcategory imposed task. The imposed task refer to the healthcare professionals or nursing care related tasks that were performed by the family caregivers. These tasks include the medication administration, drawing blood, and arranging blood and labs. Uh, because of shortage of time, I will not read all the quotations. And this finding was unique in my study uh, because the cultural uh, problems and shortage of nurses and many other problems, the family caregivers of cancer patients are imposed to do, uh, to do many tasks. Physical hardships of caregiving. <clears throat> family caregivers expressed numerous physical hardships that they are that they experiencing uh, while taking care for their loved ones while in the hospital, like etches and pains, sleeping disturbances, and maintaining hygiene. Category number two, grief and sorrow. Its subcategory is psychological distress. The psychological distress emerged from stress, fear, anxiety, crying, and neglecting self when providing care to their loved ones with cancer. In my study, uh, all the participants were cried during uh, the interview, and that showed uh, the psychological distress of the participants. Emotional burden. The emotional burden subcategory emerged from suffering and the provision of false hope to the family caregivers. Like one of the uh, participants stated, God knows how hard we are suffering here. Sometimes even doctors are scolding us. Once I went to washroom and cried because of this attitude. Allah has put us to such a test that we beg before everyone. Category three, socioeconomic burden. Subcategory, disruption of family function. Caring for loved one uh, with cancer is significantly disrupt family dynamic and functioning. Family caregivers discuss house chores, social activities, compromise education, and work life. Financial burden, the financial burden of the caregiving developed as a result of selling properties, taking loans and difficulties in affording treatment. Category four, coping mechanism and subcategory faith in Allah. The family caregivers expressed a strong belief and uh, faith in Allah as the creator and can do miracles. Patience and understanding and uh, acceptance of morality were associated with this subcategory. Religious practices. Family caregivers of cancer patients often draw upon their religious uh, beliefs and practices to find solace, strength, and hope during the challenging, challenging journey of caregiving. Offering prayer and reading Quranic verses are associated with it. Mind divers diversional activities. Some of the family caregivers are engage themselves in using mobile phones and multimedia to divert their mind and for coping from the problems. Healthcare management challenges, category five. Subcategory communication issues. The family caregivers highlighted many communication issues that added to the difficulties in caregiving. They struggled to effectively convey their own needs and emotions to healthcare professionals while trying to understand the disease as well as the patient's wishes and concerns. Facility management issues. Facility management is essential for providing supportive and comp compassionate environment for ca family caregivers of cancer patients. Uh, like one of the family caregivers stated, if it is up to me, I would have made it a full cancer ward. And the chemotherapy room should be big enough so that everyone can lie down and get chemo. And the attendants who came along could also sit. 
strengths of the study the study dwells into different uh, aspects of caregiving such as the emotional physical and socio economic burden that family caregivers face opportunity to, to the participants to share their feelings and experiences the study provides diversity in the biographic data of the participant more than one institution was selected to ensure the diversity and richness of data the limitation of the study lack of an ideal interview setting in the public sector hospital and all of the participants were muslim that was the limitation of the study the, uh, recommendation training and education for family caregivers psychological support for family caregivers enhancing share and uh, sh sharing and communication specialized areas for dead patients promoting uh, cooperation with ngos then comprehensive palliative programs to develop uh, the development of caregiver uh, training mo modules and online educational resources so november is the national family caregivers month so let's uh, recognize and uh, support the family caregivers of cancer patients thank you research on this forum um, now we have 15 minutes for question and answer uh, may i call the um, pre paper presenter on stage to take their question uh, mr sajay please help on online forum yeah yeah pre papers please come on the stage pre paper presenter please come on the stage Please, uh, my name is Samula. My question is uh, from Mr. Shams, but he unfortunately is here. Please, Shams. <laughs> Jim, please. Mr. Shams, the tool you use for patient satisfaction, uh, it was a general tool or you use some specific tool that was related to nursing communication? Actually, I have done the uh, systematic reviews. I haven't done used the tool. Uh, it was basically a systematic reviews. And those studies in which tools were used, that were excluded from my research. Okay? So it was a general, general tool? No, it was not a tool. It was systematic, systematic. review, literature review. Okay. 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 Basically, a uh, literature review, uh, systematic review is one of the form of literature review in which you already collect all review the already uh, conducted studies and develop specific criteria that these studies will be included. And then in uh, systematic reviews, you just extract data from the studies and it analyze enhancingly means up जो ऑलरेडी स्टडीज हो चुकी है आप क्राइटेरिया बनाते हैं जो आपकी क्राइटेरिया को मीट करते हैं जैसे मैंने इनिशियली प्रेजेंटेशन में कहा था उनके बेस पे जो स्टडीज आ रही हैं उनको आप ले लेते हैं और उनकी एक कलेक्टिवली उनसे क्या सेंस या क्या मैसेज बन रहा है उस मैसेज को आप एक्सट्रैक्ट कर देते हैं डेट इज कॉल्ड सिस्टमेटिक रिव्यू अगर ये आप क्वांटिटेटिव स्टडीज का करते हैं तो उसको सिस्टमेटिक रिव्यू कहते हैं थैंक यू थैंक यू Please introduce yourself, I'm asked. Uh, my, name, uh, my name is Imdad. I'm from Shifa College of Nursing. My question is related to knowledge, attitude, and practices regarding uh, chemotropic drugs dealing by, dealt by nurses. Madam, is there any module uh, present in Pakistan that has followed uh, to provide education specifically during nursing education program or either any to enhance the knowledge and skills of nurses. Uh, I could not found any uh, special module for oncology nurses and also uh, I think there is a, not a specialized training in oncology in Pakistan uh, like a, a one year a specialized course uh, um, or a specialization. Maybe uh, <laughs> but we don't have yeah 
Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes, of course. Yeah. <laughs> we, we don't have any. Acha, see, is um screen ki apko pata hai ki jab koi research karta to it's not important that he or she might have collective all the data. Yeah. Um, for the young men who asked and for the others. Okay. Uh, the nurse, as we do not have nurses specialized in oncology from the public, so we as an oncology center, Lahore, Peshawar, and Karachi, the nurses which we hire and we place them in an area where chemotherapy is important, almost all areas of our hospital, we give them a two days cytotoxic drug handling and management workshop. That workshop is followed by an exam and followed by a competency assessment. So that competency assessment is done on three, four episodes of assessment to certify that person. We have a very, very stringent module on that. That module is institutional uh, and we are trying to get it accredited by American Nursing Association for CME. Inshallah, we'll get it soon because now it's our requirement. So that's the one training which we do in-house. Secondly, we have a one-year oncology specialization program, which is first and only one of its kind, which is running in Shoghat Hanam Hospitals for, since 2000. This program is affiliated with Nursing Examination Board Punjab and is approved by Pakistan Nursing Council. That program have a bigger module, a full course of handling treatment modalities, and which include handling chemotherapy. And nurses working in that program are given clinical objective to work closely with the oncology pa with patients who are receiving chemotherapy because we're talking about chemotherapy. That program has now expanded to a degree post R and BSCN in cancer nursing. That's great, ma'am. And that is part of the national. Both of the program are offered on a national level. It's not only for hospital nurses or any nurse who wanted to do oncology nursing, these programs are available in there. So that's that, I think that explains the, even cytotoxic drug workshop, it's not only for our nurses. Sometimes we receive requests from in mold from other hospitals to give that training to their nurses. So we do that. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. But is it not important for nurses other than Shokat Khanum Memorial Hospital? Okay, may I add? As I said that, we can, those yeah. who want to join, they can come and join. These are available to for everyone. It's you who will ask for it. We will not. If you expect that oncology should come to you, that is difficult. If you have a passion, you come and join us. Madam, I discuss it because all nurses leaders are here in this forum. Okay, can can I also so we add, can there's, take also, yeah. Huh, yeah. there's also one organization which is Inter Hospital Health Network. They also started this competency program. We also have a uh, specific module for safe handling of cytotoxic drug with a competency assessment also and uh, checklist also. And we offered a two weeks orientation on pediatric oncology and we trained almost 400 nurses from national institutions. Uh, but it was a specific to pediatric oncology, like Shokat Khanam has uh, a journal oncology, we just do it for pediatric oncology. There's also pediatric oncology diploma, post RN diploma, which is offered and which is also, set, uh, you know, PNC registered program. But again, as um, Rihanna Lahi said that, you know, you have to go and get that training done. We offer that for, uh, you know, we have held courses in Lahore, in Islamabad not in Peshawar yet, but we do go, we ask institutions to provide nominations and we do training there and safe handling of cytotoxic is one of the module, very important for nurses who are handling cytotoxic drug to learn. Thank you. And so I'm much. very happy that they are doing research on knowledge, attitude and practice because we did, there's a huge difference because people do not understand that how important it is to have safe handling yeah. of cytotoxic. Thank you so much, Ma'am Rihanna, because uh, we, uh, in a, um, a very big hospital, Antarashi Care Hospital, Islamabad, there is not a single nurse who is trained uh, the formal training uh, of oncology. Uh, we are training uh, the nurses uh, in service session at the bedside and uh, there is a little uh, bit training in a specific orientation package uh, and hands-on practice uh, so, for the uh, senior uh, nurses. So if so you want to uh, share the best opportunity. Yeah. Thank you so much.
that on the lathe on the tumor to do that. So this is my question. Yeah. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yeah. So yes, if I have an opportunity 100%. to ask question, <laughs> uh, my question is uh, with Ms. Tahirat. It was a very uh, good topic you brought, Tahira, very near to my Thank heart you. as an oncology nurse. Um, so I just wanted to know, maybe I missed that information in your presentation, that were those uh, family caregiver actively taking care of patient or were those who have already gone through um, this experience, uh, what was the level? Was the patient recently diagnosed or was it a long term? Yes, it was my included criteria that the family caregivers who are caring for their patients for at least three months, months of the diagnosis of their cancer patients. So the patients who are admitted in the hospital, I took the data from them, but the diagnosis of their patients was uh, done before three months. So the uh, participants should have uh, three months experiences of caregiving. That's very good. And uh, related to um, uh, that question, I have another question. You mentioned, and this was to, supposed to come, uh, I know that when you talk to somebody about these um, experiences, there are a lot of emotional disturbance yes. coming to the researcher. Yes. You mentioned that all the participants in your study uh, in the in the category of grief they and cried. sorrow, they yes. cried. Yes. So was the researcher able to handle those um, emotional disturbance? Was there any training done uh, for the data collector or interviewer? And how would, how were you, because this is an ethical, this is an ethical concern of a research. When we talk about this topic, there is always this constriction coming to us that you might uh, raise, arouse again their emotional and uh, psychological problems which they have gone through and we might end up of having these cries and sorrows. So was there any training of the researcher done or were you able to handle them? Yes, ma'am, I uh, took care of the ethical considerations of the family caregivers, uh, emotional disturbances. And I have the experience of uh, taking care of these patients because I have done uh, a one year job in uh, psychological ward. So I was able to uh, deal with their emotional disturbances and the uh, cries as well. And were we able to uh, have engaged a psychologist in this study? Yes, we have uh, engaged a psychologist in this study, but uh, there was no need to uh, okay. Okay. for his services. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, uh, I have, assalamu alaikum. Uh, this is Shaisa. Uh, I would like to ask from uh, Taira. Uh, Madam, you have presented your study very well. I have two questions. Like uh, you were dealing with the patient ex experiences. Yes. So do you touch pain uh, as well as caregiver role stain uh, in this regard? And there were certain kind of like you found emotional uh, concept, you found the financial concept. But uh, have you touched the pain as well as caregiver role strain uh, in your study or not? Yes, I had only one uh, question uh, uh, that I wanted to ask their experiences. And there were some probing questions uh, they were, that were included, the financial problems, the emotional disturbances, the psychological issues, and they explained uh, well, I think. Okay. Uh, I have another question. <laughs> Uh, with uh, Madam Slamia, what is your name? Nassim. Nassim. Oh, okay, Nassim. Uh, like uh, you said that uh, in uh, you found uh, environmental protection uh, problems in your research. Environmental safety. Uh, environmental safety. Yeah. So, uh, but you have not recommend any kind of, uh, but like you have not given any kind of recommendation in your study. Uh, about environmental protection. So how being a nurse, how we, you will ensure it? Uh, I recommend uh, the um, education. If uh, the nurses got uh, education in uh, the sense of safety and uh, protect uh, themselves and patient environment, how they uh, protect uh, environment uh, from these hazardous uh, drugs. Like if they are uh, expelling the air from the syringe in um, open area, it may uh, contain um, uh, environment uh, pollution. So the uh, cytotoxic drugs, uh, fumes, uh, the uh, nurses, uh, patient, their attendants, and all their uh, all those uh, who are uh, here in that area, they uh, inhale these uh, particles, and uh, their compromise uh, health is compromised. 
that is a uh, environmental safety and uh, if they do not uh, uh, proper waste disposal of uh, cytotoxic drugs and the patient uh, excreta uh, that is also uh, contaminate the environment uh, my name is dilar ali uh, my question is for umar khitab sir uh, what was the main reason for selecting the staff nursing having at least one year experience? Any specific reason? So the reason for uh, selecting the those nurses who have at least one year experience because this was the issue which is directly related with their exposure. So uh, we have selected the, those nurses who worked in the critical area and having at least one year exposure. So uh, we consider that there will be enough exposure so they have gone through those challenges so that's what the main reason is that they would better reflect on those uh, issues which they have faced while providing care. So this was the reason. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Junaid Ahmed and I am one of the registered nurses working in the intensive care unit at uh, Shukat Khan and Peshawar. Uh, my question is from Dr. Neelam. Uh, Ma'am, can you please tell me that how we can improve or to engage the patient in sexual health because that is a very uh, sensitive topic. So can you please uh, discuss about that? Thank you. Uh, thank you for your question. And I think I have a similar question online that I just, uh, that was asked by, I don't see the participant name, but they are asking about how to improve and develop the culture among our nurses about sexual assessment and education. Uh, so let me tell you, like my specialization is on the sexual and reproductive health and how it came. So when you, when you, uh, you know, whenever the patient comes in the hospital, you fill out the initial assessment form. And in the initial assessment form, you are asking about everything about the patient, you know, about their respiratory assessment, about their cardiac assessment. But are we asking about sexual assessment? So when I was back in 2010, when I was doing my BSc in nursing, I noticed that like, you know, that was the only portion in the initial assessment form that was never filled by nurses. And I think that was um, that was the point when I realized, like, why are we not asking uh, these kind of questions? And if you ask me then, like, what, what were the names of, like, uh, you know, what were the names of the body parts in terms of what do you say vagina or penis like in 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 urdu or just just sexual health so what is the word for the sexual health in urdu so our jinsi or you know tolidi sehat so these were the things that i was not aware of and no, nobody taught me in my four years of program so I think, again, there is, uh, you know, as we are speaking about specialization. So I think this is something that is, sexual health is something that is like part of your normal health assessment. Uh, so this should be taught in our uh, general BSc and nursing program. Uh, I, I I don't know if things have changed in past five, six years. But, you know, back then we only used to have one only one class where we were learning about sexual health, but there was no formal course or training that actually helped us to talk about these these kind of sensitive issues. And I think um, um, one of us just presented about, you know, how it is like, uh, in, particularly in Pakistan due to the cultural issues and religious issues, it is not even like, you know, easy for us to, give care to the other gender person if you are female it's just hard to give care to male and if you are male then it's much harder to give uh, care to female so i think culturally sensitive care is something that we need to learn about and that that can only be done that can only be done when we start learning you know start some kind of a training uh also do some kind of a self-awareness training when you go and you know, uh, find out there. And nowadays there are so many online courses that you can easily take. Uh, so if you are not learning in your nursing program, you can always go and find there are other kind of a training that are available. So at least you are self-aware. Uh, so when you're talking with your patients, uh, just talk it, talk about it as you're talking about the cardiac health or respiratory health. So uh, just don't be, don't feel weird. And um, there are times when patients are not comfortable talking about it, but they have questions. 
questions from you and they think like you know it's just not appropriate to us so when you start or when you initiate the conversation they might ask you more questions about it and that not necessarily you know all the answers so if you don't know the answer just try to navigate like you know who are the other people who can help them with those questions so maybe you know when the physician comes in or when doctor comes in for their round you can always transfer their questions or you know you can just tell them you know patient was asking about this so for example if your patient has a ostomy and they are going home with the ostomy and they have a question like you know wait when they can resume their sexual activity and you don't know about it so first thing just try to answer the question like you know by connecting them with their physician and also try to self aware yourself because if a uh, same kind of a patient comes back uh to you like you know a maybe different patient maybe then then you have answer to those kind of a question so you know again we need a lot of specialization or such kind of a program that can help us um you know be comfortable talking about sexual health with our patients okay thank you uh my second question is from uh, ms rehana panjwani uh may we have discussed many things about the patient care and it must be our priority <laughs> and this will be the last question uh this will be the last question uh we have a uh, time tell 10:40 so it's almost okay okay maybe we have discussed many things about patient care and it must be our priority uh but uh, the thing is uh to provide best possible care to the patient the nurses must be in good health and there are many challenges on the ground reality like we are overburdened there are a shortage of nurses so what are the strategies or techniques that a nurse can adopt in our lifestyle so that we must be in a, uh, so that we can be in a good health i mean uh, discuss some techniques about uh, our self care and well being as well thank you yes thank you so much i think uh, we need to discuss something like you know in next session maybe or in somewhere you know you know we need to understand on oncology nurses that compassion fatigue i think you are referring to that right and we need to uh, really have workshops on that and we need to talk about that compassion fatigue is something which oncology nurses experience because you know we get too much um you know tahira also did a very good qualitative study and nurses need to i mean you know we need to have more studies on nurses also that how much compassion fatigue do we have if you are uh, if you are aware of procol which is professional quality of life which also tells you if you are compassion fatigued or not do look at it so most of these strategies are surrounded by taking care of yourself is normally what we always teach each other talk to each other be humane in your communication be a colleague and there is one thing which is a new notion it is an old notion but you know it is quite completely talked about in international conference is a work friend like you need to have a work buddy एक ऐसा दोस्त होना चाहिए आपके वर्क प्लेस पे वे यू आर कंफर्टेबल डिस्कसिंग ऑल योर कंपैशन फटीक एंड योर टायर्डनेस एंड ऑल योर थिंग बर्न आउट बिकॉज नर्सिस डू एक्सपीरियंस बर्न आउट um there is a buzzword which i really am tired of which is like high workload and uh, you know not enough nurses enough shortage you know not nationally internationally everywhere i go this is the buzzword now we have to come out of it we have to accept the fact that nurses ki total number kabhi nahi pura hona theek hai this is how we are going to work now we have to work within our limitations i have seen organizations jahan pe 1 is to 40 ka ratio bhi chalta hai one nurse and 40 patients right and there are organization where 3 is to 1 bhi hai but it's the only thing that kind of i think we are all stuck in so now we have to think out of it also and we have to strategize um and see what best we can do within our limitations not just you know run around ke nahi bas ye nurse ration pura hoga to sab theek ho jayega i have worked with international nurses and you know uh, in bone marrow transplant i have been i have done observership in palliative care so yeah standard care hai there are some states in the us which recommends ke itna nurse patient ratio hona chahiye but i have seen two patient one nurse in bone marrow transplant as well in western countries right but you know you have to work and you we are all working for patient care so we have to come out of it and then uh, for our care i think you know we have to think uh, in a broader way 
um, as a colleague, as a friend, we need to have a work friend. And I, I particularly feel that, you know, it's the best strategy for us. Hum psychologist ka wait karein ke wo hume aitha ke baat karein. Isse zada behter nahi hai ke we have, you should have work colleagues. I remember very clearly uh, that, uh, you know, I joined a smaller institution few years back. And, you know, we we worked in babies. Like, you know, I work in cancer. So compassion fatigue is very high level. Pe hota hai. Matlab, it's like, you know, you're like distressed every time. And we get very bond. Our bonding with the child is like, too much. Aisa hota hai ke bas. One of the time I came in the morning, it's like 8 39 p.m. and there was a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful baby, and we all loved, loved. We all love all the kids, but you know, there are a few kids, and she was sick, and I came and you know, I saw, and you know, everybody was struggling, and she passed. It. And you know, I saw all my male staff, and they were crying like babies. Or, and then at that point, I thought, you know, as a being a nurse leader, I mean, should I discourage and should I not discourage? And everyone was hugging the parents and parents were hugging us and, and even physicians were crying. And, and then I thought, no, this is natural. They need friends. They need buddies. And, you know, this is compassionate care. Where are we? I mean, we are we's human. And then we took a time out. I mean, everybody's too distressed. And we, we called out a meeting and a meeting room and we talked about it and we all cried, even the physicians. So this is kind of compassion we need with each other. And I think this is the best solution at this point in our culture, in our society, in our country that we can give. Or ek wo jo ek purana hamara concept tha jo shayad humne badon se sikha tha ki nurses ko rona nahi chahiye agar hum roenge to parents ko kaun sambhalega ya patient ko kaun sambhalega i think it's now over with it and i think we are all human and being human means crying when we also have a, a distress situation so i think that is okay uh, very good uh, question by junaid and thank you madam for answering this question other than this, I, you know, compassion fatigue, you know, especially dealing with cancer patients because they are in very distressing situation, uh, not only patients, but their family members. So one thing is that we as uh, nurses or other healthcare professionals, we need to take care of our health, physical health as well as mental health. And that is like you take free time, you go for exercises, you take care of your diet, you have a good support system. So these are the strategies to, to deal with the compassion fatigue and the mental stress that definitely, you know, dealing uh, on long-term basis with these cancer patients, there is tendency to have this compassion fatigue. And then also you need that mental strength, like, you know, dealing with these patients and uh, taking it as a challenge. So, you know, taking care of your own mental and physical health will also help you in uh, coping with this compassion fatigue. Okay, Dr. Raisa, uh, can you pass out the mic, uh, Junaid? Hello, Assalamu Alaikum. Uh, first of all, um, lovely to see uh, so many young researchers. <laughs> 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 yes. Assalamu alaikum and a very good morning to all of you. Mujhe bohat khushi hoti hai jab apni country mein main nurses ki jo growth dekh rahi hoon, unki participation dekh rahi hoon and even I can compare it with the forum jab first time shuru hua tha and very impressive uh, presentation and all to see my so many my student congratulations neelam on <laughs> becoming dr neelam <laughs> so um mere liye bahut hi khushi ki baat hai uh, ke, you know where i see all my student and presentation uh, the reason i asked for mike that i wanted to add one more point to what uh, rehana and dr dildar has said uh, compassion fatigue ko kaise handle kar sakte hain uh, आप अगर सिर्फ ऑनकोलॉजी में होते हैं तो शायद मुश्किल है कि सारे ही कि सारे ऐसे यूनिट होंगे जिसमें यू विल सी दी ह्यूमन 
सफरिंग uh, आप देखते हैं चाहे पेशेंट हैं या उनकी फैमिलीज हैं एक और चीज जो हम जर्नल हॉस्पिटल में कर सकते हैं कि आपके पास डिफरेंट यूनिट होते हैं और ये स्ट्रेटजी मैंने एज अ मैनेजर आईसीयू में अप्लाई की थी कि अगर आपका जो सपोज आईसीयू का स्टाफ है क्योंकि उसमें ये सफरिंग ज्यादा होती है तो अगर आपके पास एज अ नर्स मैनेजर और हेड नर्स ये अपॉर्चुनिटी है अगर नहीं भी है तो हॉस्पिटल में सिस्टम ऐसे क्रिएट करें कि स्टाफ को रोटेट करें ठीक है जैसे अगर आईसीयू और सीसीयू है फॉर एग्जांपल तो कंपैरेटिवली आईसीयू में ये स्ट्रेस ज्यादा होता है और सीसीयू में कम होता है इसी तरह से जो दूसरे यूनिट हैं नेचुरली इट हैज द चैलेंज दैट हाउ टू प्रिपेयर देम तो जैसे विद इन क्रिटिकल केयर अगर आप रोटेट करते हैं सपोज इमरजेंसी में बहुत अगेन वहां पर भी बहुत हाई स्ट्रेस होता है तो जस्ट अ मैसेज फॉर द नर्स लीडर एंड द नर्स लीडर टू बिकम कि ये भी एक चीज है कि आप किस तरह से और लीव्स का हमारे पास एक जो है कि लोग खुद भी कहते हैं कि नहीं लेते हैं रेगुलरली लेकिन आई थिंक द हॉस्पिटल शुड मेक सम अरेंजमेंट फॉर एग्जांपल आपके पास किस टाइम में है जो टीचिंग हॉस्पिटल है कि जब आपके पास फोर्थ ईयर के स्टूडेंट आ सकते हैं या थर्ड ईयर के स्टूडेंट आ सकते हैं तो आप कैसे प्लान करें दैट यू गिव रिलीव टू यू नो यू मेक श्योर दैट दे गो ऑन लीव एंड दे हैव सम टाइम सो आई विल नॉट टेक एनी मोर टाइम बट कॉन्ग्रेचुलेशन टू ऑल द स्पीकर एंड टू मिस रेहाना एंड द इंटायर टीम फॉर अरेजिंग सच अ लवली कॉन्फ्रेंस टू आमिर अब्दुल्ला मेरे ख्याल में वो जो आपके जो स्टूडेंट होते हैं ना तो वो आपके बच्चों की तरह शायद होते हैं तो इसलिए हम उनको वो कर लेते हैं बट थैंक यू वेरी मच आमिर एंड एवरी वन यू नो थैंक यू थैंक यू एक्सक्यूज मी आई वॉज सो प्रिवलेज टू हैव जी मैं आपको मुझे एक मिनट बस आई वॉज सो प्रिवलेज टू हैव टाइम फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल एंड हैविंग अ सीनियर मोस्ट नेशनल लीडर विद अस आपको बहुत एनकरेजमेंट मिली होगी लेकिन आई एम सो थैंकफुल के आई हैव लॉर्ड ऑफ लाइक डॉक्टर रेसा आई एम फीलिंग लाइक नर्सिंग इन पाकिस्तान इज नाउ कमिंग टू द डिफरेंट मूव एंड दैट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट दैट पीपल आर थिंकिंग अबाउट दैम सेल्फ अबाउट दियर पेशेंट एंड अबाउट दियर एनवायरमेंट and also i'm so thankful that humne unki families ke upar bhi tawajjo deni shuru kar di hai jo ki hum bahut kam karte hain kyunki hum task oriented hain shams ne kaha tha so um for the young nurses hum specialist hospital hain hum compassion fatigue aur ye sab cheeze bahut mehsoos karte hain ek time aata hai ki wo aapki zindagi ka hissa ban jate hain shayad aap unke bare mein sochte bhi nahi lekin aapko sochna chahiye लेकिन मुझसे अगर आप पूछे तो जनरल हॉस्पिटल में भी कंपेशन फटीक के प्रॉब्लम्स उतने ही हैं डिफरेंट हो सकते हैं लाइक वी हैव पेशेंट वर डाइंग दे माइट हैव पेशेंट वर सफरिंग और आपकी कंपेशन फटीक सिर्फ हाई वर्कलोड की वजह से नहीं होती है सिर्फ पेशेंट के स्ट्रेस की वजह से नहीं होती है आपकी कंपेशन फटीक उस वक्त ज्यादा अराइज होती है जब आप कुछ कर नहीं सकते अपने मरीज के लिए है ना एक तो हॉस्पिटल है कि उसके अंदर मरीज को पेन हो रहा है तो आप मेडिसिन uh, आपके पास आप उसको पेन होने ही नहीं देते आपने पेन असेस किया है आपने मेडिसिन है आपके पास ब्रेक थ्रू है आप एक घंटे के बाद असेस करने के पाबंद हैं पेन नहीं ठीक हुआ आप डॉक्टर को बुलाने के पाबंद हैं लेकिन एक हॉस्पिटल है जहां पे पेशेंट आपको बताता है मुझे दर्द हो रहा है तो आप कुछ भी नहीं कर सकते और आप डॉक्टर को कहते हैं तो वो कहते हैं कैंसर का मरीज है दर्द तो इसको होना है फिर आस्ता आस्ता आप मरीज को भी ये सिखा देते हैं कि तुम कैंसर के मरीज हो दर्द तो तुम्हें होना है फिर वो बताता भी नहीं शम्स ने कहा था कि मरीज आपको बताता भी नहीं क्योंकि आप उसको सुनते नहीं तो यंग लोगों के लिए हर चीज अंडर ग्रेजुएट कोर्स के अंदर नहीं हो सकती आप पहले ही बड़ा ओवर बर्डन है आपका डिग्री प्रोग्राम दुनिया के किसी भी मुल्क के डिग्री प्रोग्राम से हैवी प्रोग्राम है जिसको आप सब गुजार रहे हैं गुजार रहे कि नहीं चार साल में और कितनी एक्सपेक्टेशन हैं इफ यू वांट टू वर्क एंड लर्न स्पेशलिटी पेन मैनेजमेंट कीमोथेरेपी मैनेजिंग फटीक मैनेजिंग सेक्सुअल प्रॉब्लम्स मैनेजिंग कम्युनिकेशन हर चीज एक स्पेशलिटी है कि ना एक दिन क्लास में बैठ के टीचर से मैनेज कम्युनिकेशन का प्रोसेस पढ़ लेने से आपको कम्युनिकेशन नहीं आता मुझसे पूछे ना अगर मैं भी भाई 
मैं इस वक्त डायरेक्टर नर्सिंग हूँ कैंसर हॉस्पिटल में काम करते हुए मुझे सालों हो गए हैं काउंटलेस इयर्स स्पेशलिस्ट नर्स हूँ मुझसे भी कई दफा पेशेंट के बहुत से सवालों के जवाब नहीं होते मेरे पास मेरे पास नहीं होते इसी तरह जैसे एक, एक बच्चे ने कहा था कि साइटोटॉक्सिक ड्रग ये बहुत स्पेशलाइज फील्ड है मैंने आपको बताया कि छह छह महीने के मॉड्यूल्स हैं हमारे स्पेशलाइज्ड प्रोग्राम के अंदर तो एक दिन में नहीं सिखाया जा सकता सो so, आप बीएस करें आप एमएस करें जो भी ट्रेंड पाकिस्तान के अंदर चल रहा है आप करें लेकिन आपने देखा होगा कि आपकी जेनेरिक डिग्रीज आपके होराइजन को उस तरह नहीं बढ़ाती हैं जैसे स्पेशलाइज एजुकेशन और ट्रेनिंग बढ़ाती है अब तो पाकिस्तान के अंदर कई यूनिवर्सिटीज ऐसी हैं जो स्पेशलाइज क्लिनिकल ट्रैक्ट के ऊपर एम ऑफर कर रहे हैं आप वो ट्रैक्ट अपनाए आपको मजा आएगा बेड साइड पे काम करने का मैंने ऐसे जिन कंट्रीज में काम किया है मैंने देखा है कि लोग ऑफर करते थे नर्सिस को टू बिकम नर्स एजुकेटर एंड मैनेजर और वो कहते थे नो आई एम अ नर्स आई एंजॉय माय जॉब वर्किंग विद माय पेशेंट्स हमारे यहाँ अनफॉर्चुनेटली थोड़ी सिचुएशन रिवर्स है हम कहते हैं कि नहीं ये मैंने दो साल कर लिया है मुझे एम करके टीचिंग या उसमें जाना आपका पैशन है हम नहीं मना करते आप जाए और वो भी तो हमें चाहिए टीचर भी लेकिन हमें पढ़े लिखे एजुकेटेड नर्सेज जो हैं वो बेड साइड पर चाहिए मैं उन लोगों में से हूँ जो बी एस सी नर्सिंग नेशन के अंदर डेवलपमेंट प्रोग्राम का हिस्सा थी विद वन ऑफ द ग्रेट नर्सिंग लीडर डॉक्टर अमर सिंह पाकिस्तान नर्सिंग फॉरम पे और हमारा एक ही एजेंडा होता था कि बी एस सी नर्सिंग का प्रोग्राम हमने लाना इसलिए है कि हमें ज्यादा इंटिलेक्चुअल ज्यादा गुड डिसीजन मेकर और ज्यादा मोर साइंटिफिक केयर एविडेंस बेस्ड केयर प्रोवाइड करने वाले नर्सेज बेड साइड पे चाहिए ये हमारा एजेंडा होता था हमारे करिकुलम में लिखा हुआ है डॉक्टर इस आपको तो पता ही होगा जो सबसे पहले 2006 में करिकुलम बना था सो आई एम आई एम हैप्पी एंड आई कैन सी ऑल दैट इज है थोड़ा सा आपको डायरेक्शन देने की जरूरत है थोड़ा सा गाइड करने की जरूरत है उसे कहते हैं ना जरा नम हो तो ये ये मिट्टी बड़ी जरखेज है साकी तो टैलेंट की कमी आप में भी नहीं है सो थैंक यू सो वेरी मच जस्ट प्लान योर वे आपने देखा होगा एक डॉक्टर पहले दिन डॉक्टर बनता है तो आखिरी दिन तक डॉक्टर ही रहता है और वो स्कूल से निकलता है तो उसको पता होता है मुझे कार्डियक में जाना है कि मुझे आई में जाना है कि मुझे साइकोलॉजी के मुझे कैंसर में जाना है हमें पता होता है जब हम निकलते हैं स्कूल से कि मुझे किस स्पेशलिटी में जाना है नहीं हम एक वार्ड में डाल दिए जाते हैं अगर तो हम उस वार्ड में काम करते रहते हैं तो थोड़ी स्पेशलिटी बिल्ट हो जाती है अगर हम हर महीने रोटेट कर दिए जाते हैं और फिर हम कोई एजुकेशन भी स्पेशलिटी में नहीं लेते तो फिर हम आ, हम नो वेयर वी आर नो वेयर सो जब लोगों से पूछा जाता है कि आप एक लाइन में अगर बता दें कि आपका पंद्रह पंद्रह साल नर्सिंग में काम करने के बाद मैं एक नर्स को इंटरव्यू करूँ और मैं पूछू आपकी स्पेशलिटी क्या है आप नर्स तो हैं आप एम एस भी हैं पी भी कई लोग होते हैं आपकी स्पेशलिटी क्या है तो दे आर अन एबल टू टेल मी बिकॉज दैट हैजन बीन डिवेलप्ड तो ये यंग लोगों के लिए आपके पास टाइम है दो साल मिनिमम एक स्पेशलिटी में गुजारें कोशिश करें कि अपनी फर्दर डिग्री उसी ट्रैक पे जिसमें आप इंटरेस्टेड हैं उसमें गुजारें सो दैट एट द एंड ऑफ द डे इवन वर्किंग इन अवर्सिटी एज अ प्रोफेसर यू कैन टेल आई एम एन आई सी यू नर्स आई एम अ पीडियाटिक नर्स आई एम अ कैंसर नर्स you can tell people so that is important thank you so much thank you very much for all the presenter and uh, thank you dr dilam for being online uh, thank you all for coming